All right, so today we're going to learn how to make a custom alarm. Because I was working on a project and I actually ran out of alarms to be honest. <laughs> you know, they only give you like 12 or 13 because I think they count zero. So we're gonna actually go ahead and make custom alarms and show you how you can set it up to act exactly like any other alarm that you would want to. Uh, so let's go ahead and start, shall we? Yeah, I do apologize. My camera, the battery for my camera is actually charging. So there won't be any picture this time. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, let's go ahead and create an object and we'll call this object OBJ custom alarms. Why not? All right, so in order to get this going, let's go ahead and create a create event and drag this code into it. And we'll go ahead and make some alarms. Actually, we'll have one alarm called AL underscore. Mm, let's call this HP. Yeah, HP. Or let's do add HP. There we go. Much better. And this will equal, mm, let's just do 60. All right. And next we'll also do alarm subtract uh, HP. And this will equal two seconds, 120. And we'll stop with that. Like always, I'm gonna go ahead and leave these variables up on the screen. So then you can see them while we're programming. Now, an alarm, you can actually do this all inside of a step event. You can do this all inside of a beginning event, inside of a, um, what is it, uh, in step event you can also do this inside of a draw event i have actually done them in literally all of them except the begin step event right is that what it's called yeah the begin step event i have not done this and that but i know it works because it's just like a step event pretty much so what we're going to do is because of the fact that i do believe in some kind of organization and i want to make sure that this is programming in advance you know you can easily find what it is you need to find to change anything or tweak anything and also to allow this game to run with well the best performance possible because of such we're going to actually split this into two different things okay we're going to make a step event and then we're going to make an end step event inside the step event this is where we will control the, oh wait, let me increase the font size. If I can find out how to do that. Um, okay. There we go. Good, so it should be able to be seen now. Inside of here, we will control the custom Alarms. Oops. And subtract or subtract from them. All right. So inside of our step event, we're going to do if al add hp is greater than zero. We will simply do L add HP minus equals one. And pretty much we'll do the same kind of thing as well. If AL subtract HP is greater than zero, as you can see, it's pretty much the same exact layout. You name the alarm, and then after you name it, you make sure there's a value in it that's greater than zero. And if it is, well, 
you go ahead and do what needs to be done. Now, there we go. We have that all set up. Let's go ahead and close this. And inside of here, the end step is used to activate, activate, right? Activate custom alarms. So now we can simply do this inside of a switch, but I highly recommend doing it inside of an if. I mean, if you do it inside of a switch, it's just gonna make the lines of code so much longer, definitely depending on how many alarms you decide to create, because uh, you'll have to switch everything. And then you have to, yeah. Switches are faster in performance. However, I do highly recommend using an if statement for this particular type of setup. So if al add hp is less than, just to ensure there's no problems, or equal to zero. Oops. We're going to, well, add HP. Um, I guess we'll just do, uh, let's go ahead and make one more variable in here and call this variable HP. And we'll start it off at 50, why not? There we go. So HP plus equals, mm, let's do five. All right. And if add, I mean alarm subtract HP is again, less than or equal to zero, we will simply uh, subtract HP. HP will now minus equal, mm, let's do two. Now, this is all good and dandy, but what if we want the alarm to actually repeat? Well, just like you would do if you actually had an alarm event, Inside of each of these alarms, underneath it, you will simply just reset alarm by al add hp equals, um, let's do this time, 120, two seconds, oops. Two seconds, right? And the same concept down here as well. You want this alarm to reset? Well, just reset the alarm. Equals, uh, let's do choose this time. It will be either two seconds three seconds or five seconds, why not? Now, of course, since I decided to use choose, let me extend this some, I have to add the uh, randomize in here. All right, and there you have it. Now, let's go ahead and set up something in order to see if all of this is actually working correctly. Let's go ahead and add a draw event in here. Um, drawing info. All right, let's go ahead and draw text and it's going to be at XV. Actually, I don't have XV set up in this. So it's going to be at, let's just do 250, 250 uh, 150 right here. And the string is going to be string AL add HP. We're going to draw that alarm. All right, plus, Let's do this real quick. Make a line break. Do that. 
plus string here and we'll do all uh, subtract HP. Wow, I forgot I enlarged the font. So, uh, one second. Okay. We're gonna do that and we're gonna do um, add. Suddenly we know what it is that alarm is. And over here we'll do similar to the same thing, but we'll do sub. We'll type in sub here. Give a line break for the next alarm that we're going to, well, the next information that we're going to draw, which will be string HP. And right here, we're going to just simply put HP and close it off. There we go. Let's go ahead and close that. And then let's put, yes. Then let's put this object into our room. Object custom alarm. All right, and we should have actually created a custom alarm that works just like it's supposed to. There we go. The sub is a random, is randomly selecting its next amount of seconds. It's gonna wait. The add is constantly resetting. As you can see, the HP is being added as well. And you can do a lot of more cooler things as well since it's a custom alarm. You pretty much can do whatever it is your mind thinks of, actually. You can have it to where it only resets after a certain amount of time. Or it stops resetting after a certain amount of time. And I might as well go ahead and show that real quick. It's only been 12 minutes. Try to keep this one under about 15. It's not a long or complex topic. Just want to kind of show you some more little tips you can do with custom alarms. So in here, we'll just do... Uh, reset total and this will equal zero I'm gonna use it zero because I'm gonna use that same uh, uh, variable for both of the alarms I forgot I want to keep those things open while we're programming okay oops my bad no. and see we know this is for activating them so in here we're going to only make this happen if reset total is less than five. Then we're going to do this. All right. And at the end of each one, add to reset total. Just like that. Reset total plus equals one. Boom. And Oh, these super large fonts are like making, I don't know, it's kind of weird for me. Okay, so inside of here, if um, reset total is less than, mm, what is going to subtract up to seven times, so less than seven. We'll do this just like that. All right, now right here, I just kind of realized something. This will actually make it a plus two each time. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Cut that, paste that in here. And you don't actually have to paste that in here. I'm just doing this to make sure no, no problems occur. You know, that, that's pretty much all. Just more cautious about that. 
about problems occurring inside of my games or applications. That's the only reason why I put it inside of here. It will work exactly perfectly outside of here. So it's up to you, but I'm gonna put it inside of here, inside of this right here. Okay, so we can go ahead and start this and we should see everything acting accordingly. Well, I guess we won't yet. Let's close that real quick, go back to the draw and let's draw the reset total on here as well. So I'll go ahead and make a line break and we'll do a string. We'll write reset total on here, uh, plus it with a string total, just like that. All right. We have total one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, see? The ad actually stopped. But the HP is still occurring. Oh, that's right. We have to add something else because now we added the total. So let's do that real quick. Up into here. Um, for what was it in here? Uh, do, 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 do. We don't actually have to add anything. We just need to replace that. There we go. Pretty much now we need everything to happen inside of the reset total brackets. All right, let's close that. Close that, go ahead and save. And everything should work correctly now. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, perfect. All right, so there you have it. That is how you can make custom alarms. So if you ever do run out of the alarms they give you, you have nothing to worry about because now you can simply make more and more and more and more until your heart is content. Thank you all for watching and remember, be real, be true, and be yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any kind of ideas or yeah, ideas of what else I should teach within Game Maker Studio or any questions about certain topics within Game Maker Studio, just leave it in the comments below. And if I have any kind of time, I will actually go ahead and make a video on that topic as well. So yes, again, thank you all guys for watching. Have fun. And remember, be real, be true, and be yourself. Mm -hmm.